see me sick. Yeah, we got that remedy. What do you got? Hey, what do you got? Heard you got that kill for me. What do you got? Cause I need help. What do you got? Cause talk is cheap. So I dedicate to do the serial week. Yeah, we not moving corners. So they thinking that we weak. Yeah, never get it twisted. Hey, don't sleep. We the sanctify. We pull up to your hood to clean the sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm blessed. Wolfie on the crest. Yeah, all I do is raving. Brain for the rest. To the east from the west. From the west. On a quest. Never rest. About that work, dog. About it, I'm obsessed. Yeah. Sabbath morning, rise and shine. Hit the block, make it hot. Shake him down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah. This is how we rock. Friday night, gotta rest in the morning. Hit the block, shake him down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared oh, yeah, for the yeah. op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah. Uh. This is how we rock. Hit the block, make it hot, they be shocked, that's a watch. Watch a doctor, head chop, body drop, get the mop. This a jam, this a bop, for the flock, top of top. How much love, that's a lot, on the quest, not a yacht. Got a Glock, it don't pop, that's a prop, never stop. Ain't no fear in the mirror, check your spirit, watch. We just pick a corner, we any mighty home. From here to California, we pull up and it's a corner, corner. Kamikaze sliding like conveyor belts. If you try to play the profit, you gon' play yourself. Saturday to day to day we on the way with help big soldier we take orders like okay what else check the stats all facts never cap we be everywhere we at on the map in the trap me and ja back to back boost black strip strap this is with that this and that friday night take a nap we wake up it's a wrap sabbath morning rise and shine hit the block make it hot shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah this is how we rock friday night gotta rest in the morning hit the block shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah this is how we rock sabbath morning rise and shine hit the block make it hot shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah this is how we rock friday night gotta rest in the morning hit the block shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm I'm not a bad individual. I just make some mistakes on my way down the road. Drop that old man like a give and go. The one in the mirror is my biggest fall. Ain't gonna act like it's difficult. I gotta get right cause the time ain't gonna slow. Gotta do as it is written though. Man, I thank the Lord if you didn't know. He saved my life. He saved my life. When I lay my focus, I keep on well. Flip through the scripts and see diamonds and pearls. We can decide to leave that for the show. Shalom, family. We're going to rise and face the east. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of, my, of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I flee away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Father God, 
Thank you for another opportunity to come before you, O great and terrible God. We thank you, Father God, and we pray, Father, that you bring the swift destruction of our enemies that chase us, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you continue to build us up in your law, statutes, and commandments, Father God. Give us a daily bread, Father God, that we may learn your laws and apply them here in this life, Father, and become better men and women according to your scriptures, Father. We pray most of all, Father God, for those who are weak, Father God, for those who have sinned against you, Father God. We have forgiven them, Father God, so we pray that you forgive them. Father God, we pray that this class may be edifying, and we pray that your spirit enters into all of us, Father God, that we may be better here on earth. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Alright. Seat, seat, seats. <coughs> me, me, me. Gotta get that thing. You know what I'm saying? Dang, bro. Shalom, yo. Uh Officer Jadiel here from San Diego, five thirty in the morning. And to my right I got Officer Alicia. Oh dang, you gotta turn the camera on him so they could, you know. All right, let's try again. IT waking up too. Five o'clock in the morning. That is who? Officer All right, praise God. Um, shoot, he was just gonna let you talk in the background. You was gonna be the voice like uh, Wizard Kelly on uh, uh, what's that? What's that show? Proud Family. Proud Family. Yeah, Wizard I'm Kelly. You just gonna see a neck. Um, all right. Before we jump into my topic, right? I know I'm sure y'all reading it. Like, what is he gonna talk about? Why the long face, Eeyore? Um, we're gonna start with. Let's start with First Maccabees three and eighteen real quick. This is just a side note. I want to touch on because it's on my mind. This is a warning shot. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 18. Sorry. Go ahead. Unto whom Judas answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the God of heaven, it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. So that's how the Lord operates, right? Uh, I think a lot of times, many of us, because we've been in here first or we, we've been put in position, we get comfortable with that position. We feel like, hey, I'm straight, and I don't have to continue to do certain level of work. But the Lord is telling you there, he doesn't need a great multitude, right? It's not about volume with the Lord. It's not about I need a million men, right? The Lord can do uh, great things with a small company. Even when you read about the wars that Judas went through, there was very few men that were willing to go against the customs or go against the grain, and the Lord was able to save all of Israel, right, up until this point even today with those men. So that's something we got to be able to, to take into account, right? Give me Matthew 20 and 16. So this is a warning shot. Taking it to your mind, really think about it. Don't think because you're in position today, you will be in position tomorrow. 2016. 2016, yep, Matthew 20 and verse 16. Then we'll talk about Eeyore. The book of Matthew, chapter 20 and verse 16. So the, so the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. So this should keep you on your toes. It should remind you that regardless of where you see yourself today or how you view yourself in terms of status, or you're an officer, or you got a certain rank, or a certain position in the body, whatever you're putting uh, esteem to, all of those things can be taken away. There's another brother, the Lord God, that'll take your place and do the work three times as better. So remember that. Don't get comfortable and rest on what you've already done or the mindset of, hey, I've been in position, so therefore I'm going to stay in position. You may not. All right. Uh, the topic today, Eeyore spirits or, you know, I think we typed it up as what? Uh, the spirit of Eeyore, right? I'm sure people know who Eeyore is. Uh, let's, let's just go to it real quick. I needed to do you needed a refresher. What what year were you born? I mean, I don't know if that's important. Yeah. Oh, it's in relevant. The, in the late nineties. <laughs> in the late nineties. <laughs> okay, that's why <laughs> it's relevant. <laughs> it re it's relevant to this. So many of us don't know. Some whoever doesn't know who Eeyore is, right? Um, he's a pessimistic donkey, right? That's the best way I can put it, right? Can we pull up a picture real quick, just so we can show the people before we start going? So we can show them. Why are we talking about Eeyore? I don't want them to be watching like, this man talking about Eeyore. Who's Eeyore? You got it? All right. I'm waiting on you. There's Eeyore. Is it showing? Can they see it? All right. So that is Eeyore. Yeah, scrolling down a little bit so they can see the full picture. That is Eeyore, right? If y'all know anything about Winnie the Pooh, not to say I was watching... Winnie the Pooh ever, you know, um, uh, uh, a, a bear with half a shirt on is not my type of thing. But 
Last night when I was meditating on this, this is the character that came to my mind, which would be familiar for a lot of uh, people, right? Because we all, we all kind of know who this is. So many of us are rolling in the spirit of Eeyore, right? So let's go ahead and drop it. You could drop it. Go to Second Peter 3 and start at verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Second Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So we always read this to put back into your mind the laws of God and what we need to be doing here on earth in the last days. But verse 4 shows that spirit of Eeyore right off the bat. It says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? So you're always going to have those pessimistic spirits amongst you. Those ones that say, hey, what are you doing this for? What's going to be the benefit of you keeping God's laws? Nothing's going to turn out good from it. You know, they always have something negative to say in whatever situation they're in. So let's jump into it. So all of us know where we're uh, here on earth and we're fighting. We're going through this, this battle here on earth, right? Give me 1 Corinthians 9 and 23. That should be a surprise to no one. If you're an Israelite and you're keeping God's commandments, you have issues. You have something that you're dealing with uh, day in, day out, right? Like Bishop Touch, we got 13 different spirits at a minimum that we're battling with, you know? Some brothers might have 23 but that's going to continue to be a joke forever, right? We love all our people, though. 1 Corinthians 9 and 23. Let's read that. Start there. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be, I might be partaker thereof with you. Uh-huh. Know ye not that they run, which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So we all know that we're working in order to uh, receive the prize of the kingdom. That's our intent. Go ahead. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Read verse 26 again. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So we don't run uncertainly. We run sure, right? We run not pessimistic. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. So fight. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that be any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So we all know that we're in this race, and we know that there's going to be tribulation, and the, and the job of us uh, as individually is to keep ourselves uh, temperate, not to allow ourselves to get too far to the left or too far to the right, not to be too down. Go to Acts 14.22. So knowing this, we know there's going to be things that try to push us either way, right? Push us too high, push us too low. Um, so we know there'll be tribulation. We know there'll be difficulty, right? We know there's going to be uh, trouble in the flesh. We know we're going to go to work. We're going to deal with certain things. All these things should not be a surprise to us uh, when it comes to keeping God's commandments here on earth. Acts 14 and 22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So it's going to take much tribulation for us to enter into the kingdom of God. We know that, right? We've read the scripture before. For y'all for y'all that have been in the truth for a while, it's not a surprise. You, it's not like I'm reading this and you're like, wow, it's going to take uh, energy and difficulty to get to the kingdom of God? You're saying, yeah, I've heard this before. So what? Right? That's how we think of these things. Go to uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3. And I'm reading these scriptures just so we can really get in our mind what it is we're in. We understand there's going to be a battle. We understand it'll be difficulty. So when I say my next point, should be like, well, why do we think like that? 2 Timothy 2 and 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. No man that weareth, warreth, warreth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So we know there will be hardness, and we know that our job is to keep ourselves uh, spiritually out of the world, 
to stay focused on the things of the Lord because that's what's going to deliver us in the end. Th again, these are not surprising things. Anything I'm saying, I'm reading right now, Alicia, you never heard it before? No, sir. Okay. So I, I just want to make sure, right? Because cause we behave so. Mm. Right? We behave as if this is brand new. Give me 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Jump over now. I think they forget. They forget. Yes, we are. We do forget. That's fair to say. We do forget. And that's the point, right? We want to bring back to your remembrance how we should take these difficulties, right? How we should look at things. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So everyone that applies the commandments of God and lives godly is going to suffer persecution. Read that one more time because maybe it says you might suffer persecution. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Everyone is going to suffer persecution. So everyone listening to this class, everyone that says they're Israelite and is keeping God's commandments is going to suffer persecution. Right? That's my point. I want us to all of you on the same page. Give me Sirach 33 and give me verse 14. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 14. Good is set against evil. And life against death. Uh -huh. So is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. So look upon the works of the Most High. And there are two and two, one against another. So the Lord ordained conflict from the beginning. He always set it up so that there would be an opposing force to you. If you're, if you're righteous, there's going to be something opposing to you. Even if you're the wicked on earth and you were sent here to be a wicked, well, the righteous is going to fight against you. It's always been set up that way. But my point is to focus on the righteous that's battling with the wicked. So we know there's going to be tribulation. It's not a surprise to anyone. No one should say, oh, I, I, I'm confused why there's tribulation in my life. I'm confused why there's difficulty, right? Give me uh, Sirach 2 real quick. I didn't have this written down, but this is something else we know of. We know there'll be difficulty. So rock two and start at, you got something? Two and five. Okay. Now, the same thing with that. Uh, what's the scripture that goes over? It says, thinking not strange. Yeah, we're going to that. First, first Peter 4. We can go there. Find it. First Peter 4. We could go there. We could read it now. Go to second, uh, so rock two. And just go to verse five. Let's get to the point. So rock chapter two and verse five. Start at one and then jump to five. Verse one. My son. If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So if you come to serve the Lord, you know you're going to be tempted. You know your spirit's going to have to deal with things uh, that are against the Bible. You're going to be tempted maybe in finances, by your wife, uh, by your job, by your diet. All these different things are going to be tempted. Some of y'all uh, have a problem with lust and women. You're going to be tempted by those things. Sisters, too, you deal with that as well, right? So all we know these things are going to happen. Give me verse 5. Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men and the furnace of adversity. So in order to be made acceptable to God, you have to fight through those temptations. So it's not a, a, uh, a question as to whether or not you'll be tempted. It's a guarantee, right? Like Charles Barkley say, guaranteed. You already know. You're going to have, he's a coon, but I'm just bringing that point up, right? It's guaranteed, according to the Bible, that you're going to have a... Uh, uh, um, tribulation or adversity it's not it's not it's not anything that you should question when it happens that that that's coming upon you and that's how we gotta we gotta have our mindset go ahead you had some yeah go to the one in uh what's that Fir first first peter's four and twelve yes sir read it when you got it the book of first peter's chapter four and verse twelve beloved think it not strange concerning the f the fiery the fiery trail trial, mm -hmm. which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right. So going back to what you're saying, said don't think it's strange when a when a trial come upon you. It said that thing's gonna happen. He said think it not strange when the fiery trial come upon you that some strange thing happened like you didn't expect it. Because that's why we're going over the classes so that you can expect if you in the scriptures and you know you preparing yourself getting studied you're not gonna be. Uh, caught off guard when these things happen. You're going to prepare yourself like, okay, I know this is coming. It's just a matter of when, you know, and I'm, a am I going to be prepared for it? Am I going to have the right mindset to think, hey, how do I solve this according to the scriptures? That's it. Exactly. You, it won't catch you off guard. So despite everything we just went through, some of us still roll around in the spirit of you. It doesn't matter. Oh. I might as well just, you know, go home today. Oh. 
Some brothers roll around like that. Rega- regardless of everything we read, that there's going to be tribulation. You walk through the day, and you have nothing but a negative mind, right? So let's pull up the article that we had pulled up. Let's pull it up. It should be tag number one, because I try to be nice, you know, put everything in, in perfect, you know, good decency and order, you know? So number one. Let's pull that up. That is number two. Number one was Eeyore. What's the brother say? What's the point of reading the Bible? Like my memory's bad. Oh. I just want to go home. I would <laughs> go to the school, but if I go to the school, there's going to be better brothers at the school. Wow. Oh, woe is me. Oh. And, and, I, and, and it's not to make fun of these brothers. I understand brothers battle with depression, right? So I want to put that out there as well. Right. But there's, there's some brothers and sisters where regar- every time you call them, regardless of what's good, right, they have negative to say. Yeah, or their speech is just, like, so drained. Yeah, you know? yeah, or it drains you. Yeah. You know, you call a brother, and you're like, hey, man, how you doing, man? And, you know, something good just happened. The brother be like, yeah, man, I got a promotion at work. I got a promotion. Yeah. But it means I have more work to do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah. We can't be that way. We have to We have to find positive, especially when we're in here in captivity. We've got to see something that will keep us focused. Let's let's roll down a little bit. So I- here's Eeyore, the character of Eeyore. So some of y'all roll around in that spirit. You gotta you gotta click some of this out. Click the little X at the bottom right. Bottom right, click that X. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Scroll up a little bit so we can read what it says. It says Eeyore is a pessimistic. You can read it. You can read it. You got it. Pessimistic. Eeyore Pe- is a <laughs> you got pessimistic. It. That's right. And glooming old stuffed donkey belonging to Christopher Robin. He first appeared in Disney's 1966 theatrical short Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. All right, scroll down. So Eeyore is a donkey. He might be Northern Kingdom. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he is. You know what I'm saying? But he could be. Could be. All right, scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I just want to read a little bit. Uh, You got to keep going. All right, background. Background. Everyone is stuffed with sawdust. And lives alone underneath a small teepee style house made of sticks. A running gag in that everyone's home is almost always knocked over. Eeyore's home is almost always knocked over. Eeyore's no home is al- almost always knocked over, forcing the gloomy donkey to rebuild it from scratch, usually a different location. He has his own area in the 100 acre woods, known for its this small, dismal, dismal atmosphere. Every Eeyore's gloomy place, where he is typically seen sulking under a rain cloud, or eating thistles. Thistles, right? Thistles. So he's he, they see him eating thorns. He under a rain cloud. Ain't nothing good for this man. Some some of y'all brothers and sisters roll around in the spirit of Eeyore. It's nothing good. Every time you have a conversation, it's like, man, this is terrible. Scroll down to personality. You call a brother, you're like, man, I had a great day, man. How you doing, man? Man, rough. it was rough. Captivity, man. Just the just the cat died. Yeah. The dog speaks Spanish now. My car has a flat. Yeah. Woe is me. I stubbed my toe earlier. I'm telling you, this brother, what, what Bishop call these brothers? Yellow makes me sad. Yeah. Right? And, and it's a lot of brothers who roll around in, these, in this spirit. Read personality. Watch. Personality. Eeyore is hardly ever happy, and even when he is, he's still sardonic, sardonic, and a bit senile, cynical, cynical. Ironically, he actually seems to enjoy being gloomy, to an extent, and he see and he sees it as the essence of his very being. Mm. Nevertheless, he seems genuinely appreciative of the efforts of his friends put forth to cheer him up. And is still a good friend. Eeyore's grump, grumpiness and negative ways might be attributed to the fact that his tail is affixed and his backside using a pushpin and has it <laughs> and he has it a he, tendency a tendency to fall off. He doesn't like he doesn't like his tail, but he agrees that nothing better can replace it. He also loves sad stories because they make him feel more appreciative of his life and what he has. He also really likes eating thistles 
and you know that little thing out the way? This was and sugar cubes. So you got brothers and sisters like this, where they want to call you and talk about sad things, so that when you give them your sad, they're like, "Well, at least my life is better than that." That's the energy. A lot of sisters is like this too. They get on the phone and they gossip about problems, so that they can be like, "Well, at least I don't got that problem." Yeah. You Eeyore, you are Eeyore. Right? Many brothers, they call you and they just complain, complain, complain. Nothing positive can happen. When we was in the world, a lot of brothers like sad rap songs. Yeah, but I was just about to say that. Brothers like listening to those sad songs. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because like, like he just said, it says some brothers actually enjoy being gloomy and sad. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like that's just what they like to do for some reason. Correct. And we're going to dig into it today and see, is that the way we should be rolling if we got the Bible? Should we be still rolling in that blue spirit? That, that uh, woe is me, everything's terrible spirit. Because that's the mindset a lot of us are taking. We come in from the world and we come in here and then everything is bad. Lord give us tribulation, we go, oh, tribulation. Huh? They sound like uh, Bill Nye, you know? And some brothers, you, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's frustrating because it's like you have the Bible, you understand what it's going to turn out to be. You have prophecy that should be motivating you and guiding you and making you happy. Uh, when you read these things, it should be building you up. But you allow these things of the world to drain you to the point where you're rolling around like Eeyore. Where you at the new moon, you ain't even smiling. You're just in the corner. you at the feast day, and you got your tent away from everybody else chilling by yourself. Yep. Because you're upset about something that happened two weeks ago. Yeah, isn't that part of the curses in Deuteronomy 28? Read that. Uh, what was that, like verse 47? You could drop the article. that uh yeah verse 47 deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47 because thou servest not the lord thy god with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things so the lord jacked us up because we didn't serve him with joyfulness some brothers might actually be doing stuff that's in the bible but they don't do it joyfully they do it uh, what christ said like grudgingly you know what i'm saying you're doing something uh you're doing it out of obligation but you're not really happy when you do it and you're not really uh trying to set forth a good example behind it you're just like i have to these brothers kind of making me do it you know i have to keep the feast of tabernacles but my tent's over here but my tent's not big as his tent oh. woe is me why the long face? And then they want you to come up. Why the long <laughs> face, Eeyore? That's what it is. That's what brothers want. want We're going to read it. We're going to read about the experience, right? Give me a quick disclaimer, right? Give me some rock seven and seven. Because I don't want brothers and sisters to think that there shouldn't be any moments of sadness, right? Or there shouldn't be anything that uh, frustrates you with the, the position we're living in. We know we're supposed to be on top. We're supposed to be ruling this earth. We know that. We're not supposed to be in captivity enjoying ourselves uh, about about everything, right? But the, the point is, is... We, have, we should have a level of optimism. We should have a level of uh, uh, temperance. Everything shouldn't just be gloom and doom. Give me uh, Sirach's, I mean, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Read that. Ecclesiastes. Yep, in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Y'all thought, I, did I say Sirach? Mm -hmm. My bad. You know, I got a lot written down here, and I might have read Sirach, but I meant Ecclesiastes. Good old Solomon. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Let's read that. Man, his pages stuck together. It must be. I hear him <laughs> befuddled. <laughs> it took me a while, too, to find it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, it. I'm like, my goodness, right after Proverbs. Sheesh. My goodness. We know who ain't been reading. Hey, but I tell you what, you know what I'm saying? This brother, he's, I think this is an example of him moving past the spirit of Igor. Because, you know, some brothers be messing up on the <laughs> words, and they be like, what's the point of me reading? <laughs> Why should I, I read? I just, I'm going to mess it up anyway. I'm going to mess up anyway. You know, so, hey, that brother's strong. He fought through? Yeah, all He fought through with a Florida <laughs> education? Sheesh. I know they ain't teaching pessimism, hey. not in school. Mm -hmm. I can't talk. <laughs> No, sir. I, I know. I, that I, I came I know. on here in red and ain't never run again. I'm, I might be moving to Igory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think you got fired, brother. I think that's what that was. I don't, I don't think it had nothing to do with the spread of EO for you. I think I think we said, you all right. There's better, there's better places we can put you. Yeah. We love you, though. All right? so, uh, Ecclesiastes 7-7. Seven, seven. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes in the Bible, seven verse, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. And a gift destroyeth the heart. So we know oppression will make a wise man mad. It's no, it's no uh, guesses about that. The things we see in our environment, the state that we see our people in, it should make you upset. But should it bring you to the uh, point of utter doom and gloom? 
to where you're rolling around with a long face all the time and everybody can see that you're upset? Shouldn't be that way. Give me Proverbs 29 and 2. Proverbs 29 and 2. So this is, this is just to show you, we get it, right? We understand why, how some of these things in the world may uh, bring you to this place of sadness or this place of uh, a depression. But should you state it? Proverbs 29 and 2. Proverbs 29 and verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So we get it. The people mourn when the wicked are in place. There's no question about that. But should it be all the time? Should every single day of your life be the most terrible day? Yesterday, today is worse than yesterday. That's how brothers roll around. You ask them for something good, you looking. You coming to them because your spirit beat down, right? You call them, you're like, hey, man, this brother, I know I'm going to call this brother, this brother finna talk to me about something. I like this brother. Call that brother. You already said, he just say, your day was bad, my day was worse. You got a flat, my car is totaled. Your wife argued with you, my wife slapped me. You're like, damn, bro, nothing, man. Hey, shalom, man. Shalom, <laughs> you're going to make me hurt myself, man. I got to get off this phone with you. you making my life worse. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm calling you for, for, for something that brings me joy, and you're giving me more pain. He's stressing you out. He's stressing you out. You follow what I'm saying? Now, now you done put your pain on the back burner. You're like, let me help this brother. Mm -hmm. This is what sisters do to each other all the time. I listen to it. They call each other, and it's just nonsense on the phone. Nonsense. Because, because what happens is they call with a problem all the time. Mm -hmm. Never anything good. It's never any Brothers that got wives know what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody nodding their head. They're like, yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Why the long face, wife? Huh? All right. Go to, um, give me uh, Sirach 1926. Sheesh. Sirach 1926. So hopefully this class is going to help out. It's going to remove that spirit of Eeyore. Sirach 1926. 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 19, and verse 26. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head, sadly. But inwardly, he is full of deceit. So many, many of our people, they look like they got problems, right? They look sad. They hang their head down. But they are using it to manipulate you. They are brothers and sisters in a body like that who, when, when they show themselves to be sad, it's not because they, they uh, really had an issue. They, they're showing that to either have you back off them to not say anything about their sin, right, so that you don't address them. We had a brother like that in here, where every time you called him, you say, hey, man, you all right? And it's always this, this story. Monkeys attacked me and, in the zoo, and after the monkeys attacked me, then the elephants came, and after the elephants came, then a plane dropped on the top of my house. That's yep. why I didn't make it to the Sabbath. Yep, I, I, know, I know a brother like that. I so, like, so. How can you help a brother like that? What he's trying to get you to do is he's trying to say, if I give him all this pain and suffering, he'll never hold me accountable. Yep, he'll stop you right there in your tracks. You're like, hey, man, uh, why you ain't? Oh, man, shh, had this person die. My Jesus life. died. That's why I'm so no, sad. No, like, oh, Lord. You didn't read about that? No, you just found it out? Yeah, yeah I'm just he, fine. He wept, too. <laughs> so I was like, I, had, I started Sheesh. crying when I read that verse. Sheesh. He wept. <laughs> Sheesh, man. I'm, I, I, and I'm telling you, it's. It, it, it drains the men above you. It drains the men around you. It drains the sisters that are over you, the sisters that are around you. It's, it's draining, right? Keep reading. Read the next verse. 27. Verse 27. Casting down his countenance and making as if he, excuse me, and making as if he heard not. He gets sad. He put his head down and he's, hmm. and you're talking to him. You're like, did you, hey, did brother, did you hear me? No. Honey, what'd you say? Go ahead. I'm telling you, you've seen it before. Nobody has... Kids do this all the time, right? People see kids, they, they, they uh, bow their head before they're about to get the whooping because they know the whooping coming. They know they done did something wrong. So they come up to you already sad, and they're looking at you, and you're like, what you doing? Because they're trying to, they're trying to uh, stop you from handing out any type of punishment or correction. Go ahead. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. So... He's going to hang his head, he's going to act like he doesn't hear, and then evil is going to come from that brother or that sister. Go ahead. And if for want of power, he hindered from sinning, yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. Go ahead. A man may be known by his looks, and one that have understanding by his countenance. When thou meetest him... So you can look at a brother or sister and understand that they have countenance. A brother... Uh, oh, uh, understanding, sorry. 
And a brother or sister who is always in a state of anger or frustration or sadness, they don't have understanding. There's something lacking in them because that should not be uh, the way you roll around all the time. Shouldn't be the way you roll around all the time. There should be times where there's joy. There should be times where there's sadness. You should see a range of different emotions. You should see different things. Not, not even that you should just be this emotional, unkept brother where it's just all the time you run around like, screaming at the top of your lungs happy. But that should exist in you. Love should exist in you. Joy should exist in you. It shouldn't be something that, nah, I can't, e I can't even have joy. I grew up in New York. There ain't no joy there. Right? So if you go to New York, you'll see everybody got a mean face on. The entire city. You get on the train, everybody looks like that. It's an entire city where there's no joy. But certain people, when you go around your family, so on and so forth, you at least show that then. Right. Just like the brothers in the school in New York, you know what I'm saying? They, I seen they had a whole bunch of joy in that. Exactly. But you know, I mean, I'm sure on the outside when they go about the streets, you know what I'm saying? It's a, like a different, like you said, a time and a place. You exactly. Know? It's a time where you're supposed to behave that way. You follow what I'm saying? But some of us we roll around and it never exists. The joy never exists. Give me uh First Kings 21 and one. Let's look at some examples now. Let's look at some Eeyore brothers in the Bible. Why the long face, Eeyore? I'm gonna read about him. Here goes one. First Kings 21, start at verse 1. The book of First Kings, chapter 20, is it 21 and 1? Yep. First Kings, chapter 21 and verse 1. And it came to pass, after, the, after these things, that Nabal, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, heard by the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab was the king of the northern kingdom. Go ahead. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a bitter vineyard than it. So he said, a give better. me a vineyard, and I'm going to give you something better. This is close to my house. Give me a vineyard. Go ahead. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth, and Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me, the Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Because he said, according to the law, I'm not supposed to give you this. This is my inheritance of my forefathers, right? We had allotments of land. So I'm not giving you this. That's what he's telling the king. Go ahead. Now, look what the mighty king goes and does. And Ahab came into his house, heavy and displeased, because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, has spoken to him. So he go into the house, and he like, hmm, hmm. So now he's sad because he didn't get the land that he wanted. Go ahead. For he said, I will not give thee the, excuse me, Jezreel has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. This is weakness. He said, because I'm not going to get this land, I'm going to go in the house, lay down, roll over and look at the wall, and I'm not eating anything. This isn't fair. This isn't fair. Woe is me. Tribulation. <laughs> Go ahead. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? So here comes the devil. Why is your spirit so sad? She didn't probably even say, My Lord. She surprised said, My neck. <laughs> right? Go ahead. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money or else. If it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee thy vine, my vineyard. So this brother went into instant depression over a vineyard. No, no mindset of, hey, man, you know what? There's other vineyards. At this time, he's ruling over a kingdom. You don't think he had a lot of land? Oh, yeah. So, so one plot of land sent him into deep depression. And he, uh, he wanted everyone to know it, too. Yeah, he's showing it. He walked in the house with his head hanging. He said, hmm. Slamming doors, closing so, drawers. So Jezebel said, why the long face, Ahab? And then Ahab went into a spill. That's what you're looking at. There's brothers and sisters like this. They roll around. They want to show you their sadness for the purposes of you giving them what they want. That's why they roll around like that. Give me uh, Jonah chapter 4. Let's look at Jonah. You had an example, too. You could bring that one out, too. Go ahead and find it. Go to, let's go to Jonah chapter 4. Let's start at verse 1. So you, you, we got to wait for you. You got to be like, where's Jonah? 
<laughs> where's Jonah after Obadiah? I can't understand. He like, shoot, where is Jonah? He went four and one. Four and one. Let's go. <laughs> Jonah chapter four, verse one. He's not in the well. Go ahead, read that. Four and one. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and his w- and and he was very angry. Uh huh. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying? When I was yet in the my country, therefore I fled before unto Tarsha. You got two mics on over there? I ain't got no mic on right Yes, sir. We got two mics on over there, fam? All right. Back it up off of you a little bit. It's echoing. Go ahead. Read so it again. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying, when I was yet in my country? Therefore, I fled before unto Tarsha, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore, now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Keep on. Then said the Lord, does thou will be angry? Excuse me. Does this thou well to be angry? So the Lord asked him a question. Does it benefit you to be angry? That's what he's asking Jonah. Does it benefit you to be angry? Go ahead. So, <coughs> so Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. And there made him a booth. So he made him a tent. Go ahead. Or a booth. Go ahead. And sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a ground. Excuse me. The Lord God prepared a ground, a gourd, or a gourd, and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the go- the gourd. So the Lord made a gourd over Jonah. It covered him. It delivered him from his sadness. Now he's happy because this gourd is above him. So Jonah went from ha- being angry to being happy. Go ahead. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day. And it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. He said, it's better for me to die now that I don't have this gourd over my head. So Jonah was going through a range of different things, right? He went from. Hey, man, I'm happy to a gourd that he didn't even plant. He had nothing to do with. The Lord created and put it there for him so that he would have happiness. He couldn't even see, hey, the Lord took care of me yesterday. He went to, it's better for me to die. And that's how many of us are. We cannot see any positive. We had positive just yesterday. He had positive just yesterday in this. And you'll look at your life not as something evil comes upon it or some, some sort of tribulation. And you'll say, man, I'm better off dying. Keep reading. Watch. We're going to finish the chapter. And God said to Jonah, Does thou well to be angry for the gourd? Mm -hmm. And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Read it again. Even unto what? Even unto death. Jonah said, It makes sense now for me to be angry unto death. And that's how some of y'all are. Some of y'all have made a decision that you're going to be angry to death. It don't matter what good comes. You could get get everything you prayed about when you was in Christianity. When you was like, man, I want a car, and I want a house, and I want a wife, and I want this, and I want that. The Lord could bring you all of that. But you've made a decision in your spirit that I'm going to be angry regardless of the fact. That's that's how I'm going to roll. Because you want to. Not because you have to. It's because you want to. So this class is for you to really think about why are you rolling around in that spirit. Because there's no way anybody that's keeping the commandments of God can say, There's never been anything positive that's happened to me since I walked in here. You used to be an N-I-G-G-A. Most of y'all used to smoke weed every day, right? That's what you used to do. You used to go home, smoke weed, right? You used to go to parties, spend all your money on Friday nights, buy clothes. Most of y'all didn't talk to your wives or deal with your children. Now the Bible is bringing you back into doing those things, but you can't see the positive. As soon as you get corrected, it's, woe is me. What was the point of even doing this? (laughs) Why do I keep the laws? There's always going to be someone who corrects me anyway. I'm going to mess up. That's that's the mindset. Yeah. That's the mindset rather than enduring in this thing to the end. You have one, right? Go ahead. Yeah, go to uh, Numbers uh, 14 and 1. Numbers 14. Book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice 
and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation. So, so change. So this is when we was coming out of the wilderness. The Lord done showed great signs and wonders for us. He He brought us out of the land, parted the sea, you know, clouds over us, the whole nine and ten, right? So now they saying, hey, the, now they they sat there and cried all night, and then they started murmuring against Moses. So keep reading. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? He said, man, what, God, don't you want us to die in Egypt? It probably would have just been better for us to die in Egypt or just die in the wilderness. Go ahead. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, mm -hmm. that our wives and our children should be prey. He said that, that our wives and our children should be praised, that we're we going to be dying in a, uh, by the sword. He said, so everything that the Lord had did for them, they sat there and forgot. And they said, man, it's better for us to just go ahead and die right here in the wilderness. So these brothers was moving in that spirit. They, after all the good that had just happened to them, they, we forgot it just that quick in the wilderness whenever so a little bit of tribulation came on us. And he said they sat there and was crying all night, and then they, uh, and the people said, man, it's better for us to just go ahead and die. Now jump to verse uh, 11. Verse 11, and the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they, to, excuse me, how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? So just like you were saying, he said, a brother, brothers them had a lot of good stuff happen to them after coming into the truth. You know what I'm saying? They changed their lifestyle. A lot of things started uh, working in their favor because they changed how, how they were based off of the scriptures. He says, so how long are these people going to, how long is it going to take for them to believe me after all the good I done did for them? Because a lot of our people, it, it boils down to you really don't believe. You know what I'm saying? Your faith is weak. So now you don't, you're not believing that the Lord is actually going to do something good for us in the end. Keep reading. I will smite them with the pestilence. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said he's going to smite us. Go ahead. And disherit them. Disherit? Disinherit. Disinherit them. Mm -hmm. And now, we'll Go ahead. Jump to verse uh, 17. Verse 17. Actually, read verse uh, 19. Verse 19. Pardon. I beseech thee, the iniquity of these people. So now this is an example of what Moses did, right? So Moses said, and he, he was always, I guess, on the positive side, you could say, versus what, what our people was doing. We was always pessimistic, but Moses said, hey, Lord, hey, pardon his sins. Give him another chance. You know what I'm saying? They're going to get it right. You know what I'm saying? So he was on the upbeat versus the rest of us who was weeping all night and saying, hey, we might as well have just died. So we have, to, we have to be on Moses. You have to do like Moses did, you know what I'm saying? Be optimistic about the situation. Like, hey, it's going to get better. We got to just keep pushing and keep working. Go ahead. According to the greatness of thy mercy, mm -hmm. and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even unto now. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But and, when we, and when we do that, when we actually say, you know what, we're going to get we're gonna get right. We're going to keep pushing forward. The Lord said he's going to pardon our transgressions. Go ahead. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because all these men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in the Egypt and in the wilderness, and mm -hmm. have tempted me and have tempted right, me now. Stop. So now so the Lord said his glory is gonna be on this earth. So and th so then when you read on, you'll find out that hey, the, the brothers who was murmuring, you know what I'm saying, from twenty years old and up, they didn't get the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Those those pessimistic Igor, uh, it was an ego, Eeyore spirits, they didn't make it because all the thing they was thinking about, oh, man, th there's no point to this. There's not going to be an end. We're walking around all day. You know what? And they walked, yeah, and they walked around until they died. They got what they wanted. So, you know, you got to make sure you move in the spirit how Moses did. He was always uh, on the optimistic side. Like, wait, we can get, we can do right. We can do better. That's it. Oh, well, praise the most high. So, we're going to dig into this, right? Uh, let's pull up this article. Let's look at some reasons why we roll around with a negative mind. Because a lot, a lot of people roll around with a negative mind, and, and they may, and they may think, hey, this is, this is justified, or here's the reasoning why I'm doing this or why I'm doing that. So let's, let's look at this article. You got it. All right, let's pull this up. We're gonna read. We're just gonna read the, uh, the headings on this, right? So let's read the title first. Scroll down a little bit. It's right there at the top. It's in black. Read that first. Ten reasons why someone is never satisfied with anything and how to deal with them. All right, let's scroll down. Let's go to reason one. Jump all of that. 
All right. Reason number one. Reason one. They're chasing after the wrong things. So I'm I'm reading. We'll dig into each one depending on how time uh, permits, right? But many people they have the this uh this never ending doubt or pessimism because they are always focused on the wrong thing. Some brothers are in here for rank or for position or for status. Uh, they're just looking to be better than the man next to them. So at some point, that's always going to run out. At some point, you may get the rank you desire. You may be better than the brother you desire to be better than. All of that's going to happen, right? And then when it happens and those things run out, then you're going to go into this Eeyore spirit. And you're going to slowly fade away. Give me 2 Timothy 2 and 4. 2 Timothy 2 and 4. For some sisters, they just want to get in the kitchen. They just want to be a big sister. They want to they want to marry a, a, a officer or a captain. They want to get to a certain level of what they see as status. Yeah, some brothers just want to make it to soldier. Yep, some brothers just want to make it to soldier. And the work stops. And then and then it's over. And then you're Eeyore. Mm -hmm. Everything is negative. There's nothing positive about what you're doing anymore. You have no desire because your intent wasn't to chase the kingdom of God and to do the work. Your intent was to get to a certain level of status. Mm -hmm. So you got there now. So it's like, what am I doing this for? Solomon, I want you to drop it and, and come back and forth, right? Give me 2 Timothy 2 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. No man that... Excuse me, no man that worrieth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. All right, read it again, read it right. No man that warreth. No man that warreth entanglement in himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So no man that's in this fight or in this war is going to entangle himself and caring about what position you're in. Because you understand this war is about us all working together, regardless of the position that I'm in. But if you're coming with a worldly mindset, it's always going to be about, hey, let me compare myself to this brother. And, and, and me personally, I used to do that, right? But what you have to learn is your comparison should be to Christ. You ain't met that level. You ain't made it to the level of Christ. So if your comparison is to Alicia, right, as an example, you may surpass Alicia. You may outrank Alicia, but you don't outrank Christ. You're not on Christ's level. So if you stop doing that, you stop walking around here sad. If you're a sister that uh, uh, cooks or you're in the kitchen, do are you on a level the way you can feed Christ? Is that your mindset or is it, hey, you know what? Now nah, I'm better than the sister next to me, so therefore I should be in charge. That's where the drama and the nonsense comes in. That's where the mindset of EO comes in. It's because you're not focused on the right thing. So every day you're just looking at, at things carnally. Give me uh, Romans 8 and 5. Romans 8 and 5 real quick. And if your mind is to be carnal, of course you're going to have issues. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you have a mindset of the spirit, of keeping, keeping in uh, your mind the things of the Bible, then you'll have peace in your life. But otherwise... You're going to be in this carnal mindset where you're fighting, and every single day there's issues. There's no good, no benefit. You can't see any blessings from what the Lord is doing to you. And, and every brother around you is going to be the problem. Everyone else around you is going to be the issue. You know why? Because you want to be better than them. You want to be in that position. And the Lord's going to put you there. You're going to say, you know what? Let me slide this person in this position. And then he's going to give you problems. You're going to say, this sucks. No matter what I do, I can't escape the problems. I'm sounding like Bill Nye. But my point is, is that's how people roll around. You think that being in a certain spot or having a certain level of status or obtaining something in this world is going to take away that pessimistic spirit from you. It won't. So the first thing is to realize you're chasing the wrong things, right? Let's go back to the article. Let's go, let's go to uh, number two. So that's n reason number one, you always have a negative mind. What's number two? I would just leave it up there. I don't got to see my own face. Number two. They're facing bigger issues others don't see. So many people are facing bigger issues. So I want you to switch back to me, but I don't want to see me, right? So the reason that they f they're facing bigger issues is because they're dealing with sins that they're not telling anyone about. That's what a lot of our people are dealing with. Give me Isaiah 1 and 4. Give me Isaiah 1 and 4. So our people are dealing with all these sins. We're dealing with all these, uh, uh, um, these problems. And then you're not communicating about it. So you sit here and you, d and you go through this problem in the corner, and that, that problem turns you into a brother. Now you're not even inside these doors anymore. You're gone because 
you never had a conversation with anybody. You got an officer, you got a counselor, you got captains, you got other leadership that you could be speaking to right above them. And you don't ask anybody about your issues. You hold it in. Isaiah 1 and 4. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. iniquity. When it says laden, right, I have a little uh, sign next to it, and it says heaviness, right? Many of us have heaviness when it comes to that iniquity. It's weighing on us. It's not just, just that you have sin. It's that you have a certain level of sin that you're not telling anybody about. Brother might go home and, and be addicted to porn. Every single night he's dealing with it. But he, just, he says nothing. And then he just starts to complain. Man, I don't know why that brother did that class on lust. He acting like he on lust. Then now it turned into everything is frustration. Everybody's out to get you. Everybody's against you. When that's not the reality. The intent was to help you. Go ahead. Read it again from the top. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, uh -huh. a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are, they are gone away backward. They left the Lord because of that sin that weighed upon them. So that's what this is saying. Many of us have sin that weighs upon us, and then eventually it will push you away. Give me uh, Psalms 90 and 8. Yeah, that can uh, kind of be a contribute to like the spirit of Cain. Cause Correct. Because he he his issue was rebellion, right? But then, and then when when he saw his brother, he said, "You know what, man?" I said, "I I why can't I do it right?" His countenance fell and everything else, and that, and it drove him to uh, murder. You know what I'm saying? To the point where he murdered. So you saying Eeyore could become a killer? Yeah. That's exactly what could happen, because instead of looking at yourself as the problem or dealing with the issue you have, it's everybody else. That's why you're so negative. Read that. Give me uh, Psalm, yeah, Psalms 90 and 8. Psalms chapter 90 and verse 8. Thou hast, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, mm -hmm. our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. So the Lord can see your secret sin. So it's not hidden. Whatever you're dealing with, the Lord knows about it. But in our carnal mind, going back to the last, ex the last thing we dealt with, you'll say, nobody knows about this. Nobody knows. But the Lord is sitting there watching you every single day dealing with this thing. And he gave you outlets in order to vent or to, to go get the counsel you need to fix yourself. And you don't use those. You don't use the men over you. You don't use the counselors set up in your school. You don't if you don't trust them, you don't use the leadership above them. You say, I'm going to hold it in and I'm going to take this secret sin with me to the kingdom. And that will be the thing that will turn you into the negative mind, into the Eeyore spirit, where everything is just sad about you. There's nothing positive for you to talk about. Give me uh, Sirach 14 and 2 now. Some of these we'll just read. Some of them we'll dig into a little bit. But Sirach 14 and 2. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 2. Blessed is he whose, who, excuse me, blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned, condemned, condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. What this does is your conscience starts to break you down. It says, man, you wicked. You're not doing what you need to do. You wicked as hell. You need to apply these laws. And that brings you to a state of hopelessness. If you look up hopelessness and you look up pessimism, those two words are synonyms, right? To have a lack of faith or to have no hope makes you into Eeyore. And that starts with your conscience being condemned over and over and over again. Eventually, that condemning of your conscience is going to cause you to fall away from God. It's going to cause you to say, you know what, I don't even need to be here no more. Because now all you is is negative. You can't see the benefit to keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. All right, let's go back to the article. Yeah, because I was just going to say, I, a bishop brought that out too. He said, hey, when a brother, a brother's not going to go from, you know what I'm saying, committing some sin and then reading the Bible, uh, you know what I'm saying? So now if, if when he does that and then, you know, maybe he has to, he's forced to come here, he's not going to be able to be happy here, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, he doesn't really want to deal with the Lord because he just was in, a, in whatever he was in, you know? Yeah, 100%. And so... Then now this is negative, right? You become the Eeyore spirit. You rolling around like, why we got to eat our 11 bread like this? Why, why do I eat last on the new moon? Huh? You frustrated about all these random things. Why do, why is he talking to us like that? It rings. He stepped on my shoe when he walked by, but I'm not going to say. Yeah, that's that, that literally it's brothers like that. It's brothers that will wait the whole feast of tabernacles and then be mad because somebody didn't say shalom to them at tabernacles. I'm telling you, there's spirits like that. You got the article up? Give me give me number three. Number three. Scroll down to it. He don't even got to pull up yet. He waiting on me when I'm waiting on him. Try to buy him time. 
Yeah. Waiting on me, waiting on him. All right, read that. Number three, they become numb to happiness. All right, read the next one. They so so some of our brothers and sisters they become numb to happiness, right? And that that's real deep depression. And that and and honestly, we t- we take that very seriously, right? For brothers dealing with that, but that's what the laws of God are for. That's what the laws of God are for, right? Go ahead. The next one. They're trapped. They're trapped. Some sisters feel trapped listening to their husband. Got to let things breathe. Some sisters feel trapped listening to their husband. I'm in a trap. I married him. Now I got to keep the laws of God. Therefore, I am trapped. They in that invisible box like a mom. Yep. They're like, damn, how do I get out of this? And the reason they trapped is because they want their husband for finances. They don't want him. Give me uh, Ephesians 5 and 22. They don't want him to submit to him. They want him for finances. They want him for the rod. They want him for the car that he bought him. Right? They want him for those things. But not for the spiritual benefit of having the, he- the, the, the dangly thing. That's what they want him for this. That's what they want him for. That's what they want him for. I'm telling you the truth. So because that's all they want him for, they trapped. He starts saying certain things to them. They think, man, I got to get out of here. I need to escape. So everything becomes negative. They, they create a negative environment in their house, and now they're like, I'm going to piss him off to the point where he leave me. Damn, it's not working. It's not working. I'm trying to piss him off so he leaves, so he break the commandments of God. He's like, nope, I'm going to keep the laws. I'm going to deal with your crazy mind. She's like, damn it. Sisters ain't right. Ephesians 5 and 22. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Hey, Alicia, man, choose wisely. Ephesians 5 and 22. <laughs> Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh-huh. as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So the wife is to submit herself to the husband. There's not multiple, uh, uh, there's not multiple uh, wives dealing with different husbands or multiple husbands dealing with different wives. No, it was supposed to be a one-to-one connection. So you are trapped, right? But the thing that you need to be able to see is what's the benefit of that? The benefit is that your husband's going to save you. That's the benefit. And then you got these other brothers who come in here and then they're a prisoner to Christ and a prisoner to the discipline of the Bible and the laws of God. And they get frustrated with that as well. They look at this as, hey, man, I used to be in the world and I was able to do whatever I wanted to do. Now I got order and discipline and structure. I don't like that. Well, guess what? You don't have to be here. You don't have to keep the laws of God. We want you to. But many of us are coming and we feel trapped. Like, man, why are they giving me all this discipline and this order and this structure? Why are they making me become a better man? Why are you complaining about that? You like being an NIGGA? Give me 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 real quick. Do you prefer that or do you prefer keeping the commandments of God? And that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of Eeyore spirits rolling around here complaining about, man, he corrected me. You want God to correct you? 1 Corinthians 14 to 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Right. Everything is supposed to be done decently and in order. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting cliff notes on these things. You could do a whole class on this one. Right? The fact that people feel trapped in the truth. The entire purpose of us keeping the commandments was to have order. It's not for us to have confusion. So if you're a brother here getting corrected or you or a sister being held to a certain standard in your household, that was the point of the law to begin with. It was to establish order in our community. It was to establish how things were supposed to be on a civil level, on a ceremonial level, when it came to our diet, everything. It was supposed to establish that. But when that's applied, you feel trapped. Well, I got news for you. It's either you're going to do this or you're going to die. Those are your two options. Free, uh, your free will, right? Your free will right there, right? That's what, that's what the officer was telling me we was up in L.A., right? He said, it's not much of a choice where your choice is die or live. That's your, that's your choices. So if you feel trapped, you are. You got the choice to die or you got the choice to live. So why sit here and complain about it for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Why say it benefits me to be angry like Jonah did? Shouldn't you just submit to the will of God and find happiness in it? Some of y'all not going to choose that. Some of y'all are going to choose to be Eeyore for the rest of your lives. Right, read, read uh, the next one. They're being held back by, uh, by old wounds. They're being held back by old wounds. There's a lot of brothers and sisters. Bishop talks about this all the time, where sisters talk about things that happened to them when it was two or three. Many of us can't grow because we talk about the past. It's brothers and sisters in their, in their marriage and their relationship where the, the sister is always bringing up stuff. The brother was, was a dirtbag in the world. She bring that up every time they're arguing the truth. It's 10 years later. 
Every time they argue, she's like, man, remember in 1996 when you dealt with Keisha? Why are you bringing up Keisha? Can't let it go. And then because of that, every time he go out, he at the school, he at the school, he in ranks, he get a phone call. Hey, hey, Shalom, I'm, I'm about to go to war. You with Keisha. You lying to me. Sister, let it go. Brothers is like that too. They can't let things go. All right, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Yeah, they don't believe it's a God. They mm -hmm. don't believe it's a God. 100%. Yeah. Because they, they don't see, they don't look forward at what's happening now. They're focused on back then, so it causes them to be Eeyore. Everything is still viewed through that lens of, of negativity. So it's like, if this happened once, it's always going to happen. That's those brothers and sisters. Right? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Uh -huh. Behold, all things are become new. So that should be your mindset. The things from before, I'm going to let them go. We are now keeping the commandments of God, so I'm going to move forward. Many of you have the spirit of Eeyore because you don't know how to move forward. You still focus on the thing. Back when I was six, my daddy said this to me, and I've been feeling this way ever since I was six years old. <laughs> you remind me of my father. When you correct me. That's how brother's rolling around here. Yep, yep. You got to let it go. Let it go, brother. Let it go, sister. We understand you got trauma. We all got trauma. We all have trauma and issues that we're dealing with. Let it go. Give what's me Philippians 3 and 14. What's that, uh, that, what's that movie, uh, Waterboy? Your, your face turned into the person who's been picking on him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 100%. That, I really think that happened in brother's head. <laughs> they look at you, and you become their wife now. You become that brother or that sister or that boss or whoever was nagging at them or whatever happened to them in the past, and they take the frustration they have with that situation and they apply it to you. When your only mindset is, I actually want to help you. I actually want to benefit you. So I'm, I'm telling you this because I don't want to see you go through the issue or the pain and suffering that I went through from doing it this way. But you don't take that in. You take it as an attack on your character. Philippians 3 and 14. This is what Paul said he did. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. I press toward the mark for the for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. He said, if you want to be perfect, this has got to be your mindset. You can't be holding on to old things and think you're going to get perfect. You have to let those things go. It's, a, it's necessary for you to let the things go. If you, if you are 45 talking about what happened to you when you are three, you're never going to get where you're trying to go. You're not. Because you're running looking backwards so that you got to have an analogy in your head. If you're running a race looking backwards, you're going to trip and fall. And everybody's going to pass you. That's what's going to happen to you. So many of us have Eeyore spirits because we continue to look back. We don't know how to look forward. So if you want to get rid of that, for some of you, it's just looking forward now. Focusing on the present and the future. Not to say your past is irrelevant because it's shaped certain things in you. But in order to become better, it's what can I do today? How can I die daily and become a better man or woman continuously? All right, let's jump to the next one. Ad, uh, adversi advertisements. Advertisements. Keep telling them they don't have enough. So some of you sisters, you on TikTok all day. You on the Facebook all day. Some of you brothers too, right? You looking at this brother, man, he just bought a Bugatti. He bought this. He bought that. Look at this sister. Look at that sister. You on the internet all day. Give me 1 Corinthians 15.33. No, no, no. I was gonna, I, I was gonna read the one. But the last, oh, same one. Okay, okay. No, okay. no, no. I was gonna read um, Mark four. Oh, for the last one. Yeah, oh, for, yeah the, for this right here. For this one. Okay, we'll go to it. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty three. Uh huh. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupteth good manners. Awake to righteousness. That was it. Oh. That was it. Evil corruption. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So many of you all have a negative mindset because you put negativity into your brain every day. You watch the internet that tells you over and over again you're not good enough. That's what I always used to laugh about about rap. Rap songs are telling you you're broke. That's what a rap song is telling you. I got this and you don't got it, so use a bum. That's what rap is telling you. That's what the TV shows is telling you. Everything is telling you you ain't got it, you ain't good enough. And you're watching it over and over and over again, consuming it, wondering why you walk around my life sucks. It's because everything you put into your spirit is telling you you ain't it. You should watch more classes. 
You should study more because that's what's going to put you in the mindset of I'm the greatest thing on this planet. Nothing is better than an Israelite man or woman keeping God's commandments. Yeah, and those brothers moving in the spirit of lies and deceit anyway. Because half the time, sometimes these dudes don't really even have some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if they just talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what they covet. That's what they want. You know what I'm saying? And then they put it on you to think the same way. Man, I don't have this stuff, but I want it. And I got it. Well, no, by any means, I got to get that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So read that one real quick in Mark 4, uh, 4 and uh, 18. Because going to the same thing. Mark 4. Uh, Mark 4, chapter 18, uh, excuse me, Mark 4, 18. Mm -hmm. And these are they which us are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke up the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Right, so he says, so these brothers, they sown on uh, on that ground, and then the, uh, the, the thorns and everything, it choked the word going into the, the lust. The deceitfulness of riches, the you know lust of other things, all these things that you see on the outside that you occupy your time in, that you uh that that, that you focus on, like the sisters, um, TikTok brothers, whatever uh whatever type of social media platform you might be on, and you will see these things, and that's what you all that's a, it's because you occupy your time with it, it just choked the word straight up out of you. You know what I'm saying? Now you swept and garnished, like uh like it also says in what is that Matthew? You know what I'm saying? So now you got to make sure you don't put all that stuff around you. That way you don't have that. You know what I'm saying? Allow the, the word to be choked. Because if there's not if there's nothing choking you, then the word can't be choked out, right? So you got to remove yourself from that. You know? Yes, yes, sir. To actually strengthen that, right? Mm -hmm. to, to strengthen yourself spiritually, you have to let go of those different things. Give me uh, the next one up here. They aren't living for themselves. Many men and women, again, aren't living for themselves. They're living for the praise of everybody else. They're living for everybody to like them. That's what they're here for. They're like, nobody like me in the world, so I'm going to come in the truth, and everybody's going to like me. And when that doesn't happen, they get upset. They get visibly furious with the brother that don't like them because they're like, I'm doing everything right for God. Why is there, Why am I still getting corrected? Why is there still tribulation? People don't like me in the world. Now people don't like me in the truth. You focused on the wrong thing, brother. You focused on the wrong thing, sister. Right? Give me uh, Luke 6 and 26. Read that. I told you I never had any friends. No one ever liked me. You got the sister that said, well, I never had female friends. What uh, was that, 50 Cent? Nobody likes me. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> how they roll around. Exactly like that. Nobody likes me. That's exactly how they roll around. All day. I have nobody that loves me. Meanwhile, when you stop picking up your phone, everybody's calling you. Right? When you disappear and nobody's seeing you, we all go in to check on you. But you don't see a benefit in that. Your mind still is, hey, they against me and nobody likes me. You got the devil on you. Luke 6 and 26. Luke chapter 6 and verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm. So did their fathers to who? To the false prophets. So the false prophets got love from everybody. That's what happened. So you got to ask yourself, do I want love from everybody? Hell no. Because that would make me a false prophet. That would mean that I'm telling lies in order to get this brother to like me and this sister and this sister and this sister. You, you're obviously not telling everybody the truth. Somebody's going to dislike you. That's the point there. If you are true about who you are, somebody's not going to like you all the time. You may not be everyone's cup of tea. That don't mean you go into a spiral of negativity. Negativity, right? Everybody didn't like Christ. Everybody didn't like Christ. Give me John 12 and 42. Perfect. Everybody did not like Christ. Luke, uh, John, chapter 12 and verse 22. 42. Oh, excuse me. 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him less. Uh, they did not confess him less. They should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the, they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. So many of us love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And that's what will make you negative because you don't see the, you don't see, you don't look at things spiritually. You don't say, you know what, me doing this and doing this in the right spirit, the Lord is going to uh, give me a reward. If I'm a wife and I listen to my husband and I do things in the right spirit, the Lord will give me a reward. You don't see that. You say, you know what, I'm pissed because I'm not getting my way. Same thing with kids. They do the same thing. Same thing with brothers in the body. They say, dang, they didn't promote me to the to the rank that I, I wanted to be in. So because you didn't get promoted, you go into the spiral of negativity. Not saying to yourself, I'm still doing the work of the Lord. 
My name could be Tyrone. I could be rolling dice on the corner right now with a do-rag on. That's what I could be doing. But I'm, I'm in here keeping the Sabbath, learning about my heritage every Sabbath. That is an honor and a blessing. But we take it for granted. Yep, brother, brother get corrected. And then because of that, he, he felt like, man, I can't even, I, I don't even want to go teach the word today. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, so now you letting that sit there and stop you, that uh, situation stop you from doing the word of the Lord, uh, keeping the word of the Lord, going out and teaching the people, you know what I'm saying? Changing somebody's life mm -hmm. just because you got upset. Right. Because it, it's not, it's never was about God. Mm. They're not doing it for God. They're doing it for the praise of men. They want you to say, don't see my issues. Don't see my issue. Don't say anything about them. So when they when they get brought up, it's like, man, you know what? I don't got to work no more. I'm just going to sit down because they hate me anyway. So why should I do the work of the Lord? Right. But if it, it's bigger than any man in here, any woman in here, it's all about doing the work of the Lord. So when you can't see that, negativity comes in and it spirals. Mm -hmm. And it gets out of control to the point, remember, we read uh, uh, before, it'll, it'll become sin and it'll, it'll hold you and bog you down and then you end up out of here. That's what a lot of people deal with. Let's read the next one. Number eight, they cling on to hard to they cling on to hard to satisfaction. Satisfaction. So satisfaction. some people need to be told they're doing a good job, right? So again, it goes similar thing that we just read about. Keep reading. Next one. Number nine. They set their expectations too high. Some people are always negative because they don't see any reason for issues. Right? They're, so they're like, their mind is like, it has to be a pair. It has to be this bar. When it doesn't meet that bar, they go into the spiral of, hey, man, this ain't right. But your expectations should be dictated by the laws of God. Should be dictated by what you read in the Bible. Like like the brothers who, who might come in and be like, oh, well, um, the, I saw the leadership. You know what I'm saying? He, he tripped walking off the stage, man. He's not a perfect. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he should be, you know what I'm saying, floating up mm -hmm. there. You know, mm -hmm. they, 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 they forget that, you know, everyone's a you know, mortal man right here. You know what I'm saying? They expectation is you know what i'm saying crazy they don't they don't view leadership as men who are also battling right right and because of that when they see any flaw in their leadership it's negativity from that day on out you said the bible's not true anymore yep 100 percent. first 10 i mean uh number 10 number 10 they're too focused on what they don't have a lot of brothers is like that too man i don't got this i don't got that you wake up every day talking about what you don't have first timothy six and six that is Israel. And that's why we're so covetous because our mindset isn't to say, you know what? Right now, I got life. I have opportunity. I have the ability to keep the laws of God and to please God one last time. You can't praise him when you're dead. You don't take that and say, thank you, Lord, for that. You say, damn, my car, I got to go take it to the shop today. You immediately get into that mode. Damn, I got to take my son. Damn, I got to go to work. You just get in the negative mode right out the, right out the bed. You don't even say, man, I could, man, I could, I could blot out some sins today. Praise the Lord that he gave me a job that I can try to provide for my family. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a type of mindset, you right. know what I'm saying? Instead of thinking on the positive, you know, hey, the Lord gave me all this so that I can better, you know what I'm saying, better myself and then do for my people. Oh, man, but it's, this is a hassle. This is that, you know? A hundred percent. And now everything is negative. Everything is negative. First uh, Timothy 6 and 6. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh -huh. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So you ain't going. The Egyptians did that. They took their gold and put it in the ground with them. It wasn't beneficial to them. You ain't getting anything that you brought into this world. The only thing you're going to get is your soul and the judgment for it. So that's how you should wake up and think about things. That would take the negativity away. If you said to yourself, you know what? If I die today, the only thing I'm getting to take with me is my soul and the judgment that is attributed to it. That's it. I don't get to take my car. I don't get to take my kids. I don't get to take my wife. I don't get to take this job. I don't get to take that watch. Whatever you like, it's not coming with you. So in your mind, that should be the primary thing you're focused on fixing. Read the next verse. Verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us, excuse me, let us be therein content. So if you have food, right, and clothing, you should be content. But many of us, that's not how we roll. We always thinking about what we don't have. And because that's where our mind is at, we roll around and we're like Eeyore. I don't have any money. I don't have any water. I don't have any happiness or any joy. 
Everything is negative. You talk to the brother, and it's always what he don't have. I'm telling y'all, as I'm saying this, y'all got to start listening to the conversations you have. You see these ER spirits, you got to correct them because they're going to drain you. They're, they're vampires. They call you, and then they just complain. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself, you're like, man, we, we complaining together. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you'll see, if, you, if the brother you're dealing with, and you just spiritually see, like, a cloud pop over him, <laughs> you say, you're on the phone with him, and you hear lightning in the background for some reason, like, yo, what the, what the heck, this brother's sad. <laughs> all the oh time. Lord. Shalom, my brother. I mean, look, I'm going to try to cheer you up, but some of y'all do not want to be cheered up. Some of our brothers and sisters do not. Some of y'all wives don't want to be happy. They don't want to be happy. They got to get in this Bible and find God. That's the thing that's going to make them happy. They don't want joy. They want to be in the, the, man, let me just find something negative. You could be like, man, look, I got you a brand new car, brand new house. Here go all the food you can want. Here go a gift card to get you a dress. And she's still going to go, woe is me. The kids are, the kids are mad today. You got to see that and say, you know what? You got the devil on you. Because regardless of what the Lord gives you good, there's something spiritually that's off. That's what's making you negative, and that's why we're touching this, because that spirit of Eeyore needs to go if you're going to get the kingdom of God. You're not going to be in the kingdom of God walking around, oh, hey, Alicia, oh, it's another day with the Lord. Oh, we made it out of Babylon. Oh. Is your mic on? They turn your mic off? Sheesh. Dang. Dang. Isn't that some what? It's not. It's, it's just so bright out today. Why is every day full of light? Why Why is there happiness and joy all around me and the Lord's kingdom? <sighs> You're not going if you roll like that. <laughs> we are leaving you. You're not coming. Lord's will, I make it. You ain't coming to the kingdom of God with a spirit like that, with just pure anger and frustration all the time. We're going to read it out the Bible. Let's go. Uh, we could drop the article. Give me Galatians 5 and 19. Galatians 5 and 19. We got about 10, so we're going to speed it up. Galatians 5 and 19. Before Ephesians. I'm there. <laughs> Sheesh. Galatians 5 and 19. He finna get rebuked after this, y'all. He need to read. <laughs> read it. Come on. Let's go. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Uh-huh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these... Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Go ahead. Adul idolatry, uh -huh. witchcraft, hatred, mm -hmm. ver emulation, variance, variance, emac emulation, emulations, wrath, strife, seditiousness, sed seditions, seditions, heresies. All right. So the key one I want to focus in on there is variance. Right. Let's pull up variance. There were others. But we'll focus on variance for the sake of time. So let's look up the definition of variance. Scroll down. All right. Let's uh, read that. Variance. The state, quality, or fact of being variable. Di divergent. Different or anom anomalous. Okay. So some brothers and sisters, they, just, they are in this Eeyore spirit because... They just want to be different. They do not want to roll with the status quo. So they, they complain and they argue about it just because they want to be different. Look up Strife real quick. I got to pull up the other two now. Look up Strife. Some brothers and sisters are in the ER. Just search it. Just search it right there. Where you see variants, just click on it and, and type in Strife. All right, scroll down. Strife. Vigorous or bitter conflict. Discord or... Antagonism. Antagonism. So some of us, right, we just roll in that ER spirit because we just have strife. You always want conflict. You always want to be the antagonist. You want to go anti whatever's being done. Some brothers like to argue. Some brothers just like to argue. Mm -hmm. So they roll around like ER because it's like, man, this is going to start an argument. This gives me joy. That's why I said some brothers just like sad music. They like that pain and suffering, so they got to create it wherever they go. They go into a room, everybody happy. They're like, mm -mm, I don't like that joy over there. What they say, uh, misery loves company. Misery so loves they, company. They, they got to bring you down to their level. Yep, exactly. And, and, and that's the spirit that brothers and sisters roll in, where they just roll around and they bring that upon. Wives bring that upon their husband. Husband come in the house, happy as hell. Wife go, man, look at all these bills and these children. Husband go, man, deflated, <laughs> deflated instantly. He like, woo, I was having a great day until I saw them bills and these children. He did what? 
what I'm saying? As soon as they come through the door. And that's something you should be able to look at and say, you got a spirit of strife, right? You, you create discord in environments. You don't bring joy and happiness. You bring issues to everyone. Give me Jude 1 and 16. Yeah, you popped this balloon. Jude 1 and 16. Let's read that. Jude 1 verse 16. These are murmurers, complainer, uh, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in ad- men- and an admiration. 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 Because of advantage. All right. So so there are many people who walk around after their own lust and they just start to complain and complain and complain. And that's the point. Right? That's where Eeyore is. When you look at Eeyore, he just walk around doing whatever you want to do, complaining. Frustrated with everything. There's no joy in his life. So the truth should remove that Eeyore spirit from you. You should start to look at yourself and say, you know what? I can actually find happiness. Right? I can actually see the benefit of doing this work. Give me Romans 12 and 2. You got to hurry up because of time. So when you find it, read it. Romans, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Mm-hmm. And be not conformed to this world, mm-hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we need to change our mindset. The world should not allow, we shouldn't allow this world to make us hopeless. And that's what happens when you roll in the spirit of Eeyore. These different things we went through, they make you hopeless. They make you to the point where you're like, you know what? There's no benefit to keeping God's commandments. Give me Proverbs 15 and 13. Proverbs 15 and verse 13. Let's look at that. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13. Yep. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So if you have constant sorrow, constant depression, constant being angry at everything around you, it's going to break your spirit. It's going to make you leave the truth. We keep reading it over and over again. So your job is to fix that. The laws of God wasn't made to make you in sadness all the time. It's not, that's not what it's for, but sadness is necessary. Uh, tribulation is necessary because it's going to benefit you. It's going to make you better. It's going to build you up. It's going to teach you, hey, through this tribulation, I'm able to survive. I'm able, I'm able to overcome. That's the purpose of it. It was never to destroy you. But many of us, we go through different things, and we look at it like the end of the world. So give me Sirach 1 and 12. This is what's supposed to happen when you start applying the laws of God. It shouldn't just be pure sadness that comes upon you. Sirach chapter 1 and verse 12. Mm-hmm. The, fear, the fear of the Lord maketh the merry heart and giveth joy. It gives what? Joy. That's what you should have. If you fear the Lord, you should start to have joy. If you have no joy, if every day of your life is just negativity, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong. Something about your fear of the Lord and your understanding of this Bible is off. Because you could start, you should start to have some level of joy and happiness in keeping God's commandments. Give me Sirach 30 and 22. Sirach 30 Sirach, and 22. Sirach 30, 22. The gladness of the heart is the life of man, mm. and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. The Lord gives you joy so that you can prolong your days. Not just in a carnal sense, but so that you can live forever. When you start to take joy in this thing, you will live forever. That's what's going to happen. Then you'll, go in, you'll get into that kingdom and you'll have that happiness. But it starts here. It starts with you being able to see the benefit of doing what you need to do. Right? That's, that's what we need to be able to see. We need to be able to see the benefit of keeping these laws. Give me 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. This things, these things that we're going through, they're not the end of the world. They're not the end of the world. You, you, uh, you not being praised for every single thing you do. It's not the end of the world. It's not a reason for you to walk around like Eeyore. You having tribulation. It's not a reason for you to walk around like Eeyore. Second Corinthians four and 17. Let's read that. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but of, which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. The benefit we're going to get from applying the laws of God is way beyond what we could fathom. So why can't we stomach a few small instances of issues? Why can't we deal with that? 
that's need to be, our mindset has to change. It has to go from being in this position where everything is the end of the world to saying, you know what, I have optimism. I have hope that the Lord's going to make this better. Romans 15 and 4. So getting out of the spirit of Eeyore is starting to actually have faith in the Bible. If you roll around in that spirit of Eeyore, it's because you have hopelessness in you. You have pessimism in you. You lack faith. Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The more you read this Bible, the more you'll have hope built up in you. The more you'll say, you know what, I've read about somebody overcoming something similar. I've read about somebody enduring through something similar. And then that'll create in you that faith. It'll remove that spirit of your. It'll stop you from letting every sin take you out of here. Give me Revelation 21 and 4. So those who make it to the kingdom, they're going to have that optimistic spirit. They're going to have a lack of uh, uh, pessimism, right? They're going to be able to see that the Lord is going to overcome, right? And ultimately, when you look up optimism, it tells you the definition is that you believe good is going to triumph over evil. So if you believe in this Bible, that's your mindset. Revelation 21 and 4. Revelation 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, mm -hmm. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The Lord is going to put us in that position where there's going to be no more sorrow. So if there's going to be no more sorrow, the Eeyore spirit ain't going to be there. I understand we got different things that we deal with and different issues, but we're not to walk around every single day showing everybody that. Yeah, we got to rehearse the righteous acts. Correct. So here in this time, we should learn to have joy amongst each other. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Then I'm going to read two more. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19. It, uh, a feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. So a feast is made for laughter. That's why the Lord gave you one day a week at a minimum for you to have joy. You shouldn't come to the Sabbath and have that same level of frustration and anger. That's a day of joy. That's a day of happiness. He gives you multiple throughout the scriptures. So for you to come to tabernacles or come to these different feasts with the mindset of, hey, I'm going to sit in the corner and be upset, you was out the spirit when you arrived. You was out the spirit when you got there, not even realizing it. And now that sin pulls you away. Give me Nehemiah 2 and 1. They look at, I mean, see, I was going to say they're looking at the Sabbath of another job, you know what I'm saying? So it's not really there. It's not, they're not going there to think, hey, I got to go to have joy. It's going there, oh, I got I to gotta do work or something like that. They don't, it, it's not a joyful thing. Mm -hmm. So you got to make the, the work of the Lord. That's why we read earlier in Deuteronomy says that we didn't serve the Lord with joyfulness. Mm -hmm. We got to come, come with it with joyfulness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's it. No, nah, praise us. You can't come into that thing frustrated. So Nehemiah 2, 1 and 2. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes, the king, that, w that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. So Nehemiah said, before sad. this time, I had never been sad in the king's presence. Go ahead. Sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thou counting it sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sculptures, sepulchres, uh, sepulchres layeth waste, and the gates thereof are con consumed with fire? So the point here is, Nehemiah didn't walk around sad. Up until this point, he had been the king's cupbearer. That was the first time he saw him with a sad countenance. He didn't just roll around like Eeyore. So you all, likewise, should follow our exam the example of our forefather and not roll around with that sad, upset spirit all the time. That should not be how you walk into a room where brothers just see you upset all the time. Leave that somewhere else. We all going through it. But your mindset should be, how do I lift up and create joy among my people. That is a benefit of keeping God's commandments. Give me 1 Peter 4 and 12. First Peter 4 and 12. 
first oh, second Peter. First Peter chapter four and verse twelve. Hey, beloved, think excuse me, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So nothing weird is happening to you that nobody has dealt with. We're all going through the same things around you. But some of us know how to rid ourselves of that Eeyore spirit. And we all got to get to that point. Because what we're about to go through is going to be much worse. So if we're rolling around and everything makes us sad, everything frustrates us, how are we going to get through the tribulation that's coming in these end times? Read the next verse. But rejoice, excuse me, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. You should be happy, joyous that you get to go through the sufferings that Christ went through. That should be your mindset. So you got to find that joy. You can't roll around like Eeyore and not see the benefit in that. If you, if you deal with the, the, the sufferings that Christ dealt with, go ahead. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye many be glad. Also with exceeding joy. With how much joy? Exceeding joy. It says if you deal with these small tribulations on earth, you'll have exceeding joy. In the end, you'll have unlimited joy. But it starts with you having a mindset of rejoicing now. That's what it said at the beginning of the verse. It said rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. When you can do that, you'll have exceeding joy in the end. So you got to start now. You can't roll around with a spirit of Eeyore and think, hey, I'm going to make it to the kingdom of God. Those sufferings or those things that you're dealing with will pull you out of here if you don't got the right mindset. All right? Um, so with that, say shalom. Uh, Lord's will, y'all got something out the class. I'll praise the shalom. Time for the martyrs, for the righteous sons and daughters.